Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, everyone. Do you notice anything different about me? I'm just kidding. I got my teeth cleaned. <laughs> That would be wild if you could tell. That would be that would be wild. That would mean that they were really really bad before. Um, so, um, yeah. If anything, I would be disappointed uh, at the current state of my mouth or at the previous state of my mouth if uh, if you had noticed a difference. I was gonna say t-shirt. Hey man, that's okay too. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, friends, cat, form a flask, hello, hello, hello. I hope you are well. I hope things are good. And another exciting thing, I got home just before it had turned itself into a Hillary Duff music video outside. If you know, you know. If you don't, who are you? Um, but yeah, though I almost would have preferred it because I am sweaty. It is humid. I'm actually sitting on Shadow's cooling mat right now to try to help. I got a fan going. So far, not so much. So far, not so much. But hopefully this rain um, helps cool things down. But yeah, so yeah, I, if you guys don't know, the reason I was late is because I was getting my teeth cleaned. My appointment was at two. I had no idea how long it was gonna take. So I was like, maybe, um, but yeah, so it was all good. It is so muggy, it's gross, it's gross. I'm actually really excited, so tomorrow, the reason we don't have stream is I'm flying out tomorrow to Ireland for, <laughs> Kat gets it, uh, yeah, flying out tomorrow for a wedding in Ireland, and it was so funny because I was checking the weather out and it's meant to be like 18 degrees and rainy over the weekend, and I'm like, Sign me up. All I see is 18 degrees. I'm like, perfect. That's leggings in a t-shirt weather. That is my kind of weather. I'm excited. Is that a universal term, muggy? I think so. I think so. I do think muggy is a universal term. Um, yeah. So, in uh, anticipation of this wedding that I'm going to, that specifies formal attire. So I'm freaking out because I don't know if I've ever been formal in my entire life, <laughs> um, but it'll be fine. Uh, we have some priming and prepping to do. So I've done a lot. I did paint my toes yesterday um, and the janky toe I was talking to you about actually doesn't look so janky with the nail polish on, which is good. If anything though, my big toe looks janky because I kept on smushing it um, <laughs> when I was trying to move around. So that's the only problem, but I've managed to salvage it and I think it looks fine. And also it's on my feet and I don't think people are going to be staring at my toes. And if they are, that's weird. Um, so yeah. <laughs> so one of the, the last things on my to-do list to ensure minimal chippage before Saturday is to paint my nails. So we can already see we have hella chippage happening right now. Um, unfortunately, I don't know, I guess in my brain, I'm like, this is quite a boring manicure. I'm basically still using these same colors. Um, I think I'm going to do this pattern. So two darker ones to light ones. So yeah, we're not doing any fun decals. We're not doing anything crazy. The only thing crazy about it is that this nail polish is holographic which is like wild that drugstore Essie brand was able to come up with the holographic polish. It was like a limited edition, uh, like gemstone collection. Um, so that is the most exciting thing happening on these nails right now. <laughs> I turned my nose my nail polish and pick this morning. Oh yeah. Ooh. To be fair, I, I don't fully, I feel like I don't fully pick off my nail polish. What happens is there will be like a loose bit and I'll get that off and sometimes it pulls up more with it, but I don't like the stuff that's pretty stuck down, I leave. But it's like if I'm brushing my hair or like moving my fingers through my hair and then you get like a strand of hair when I'm petting shadow, like underneath, like somewhere between the nail and the nail polish, I'm like, you're loose, you can be popped off. At least that's what I think. <laughs> so all of the lotions and potions and things, I guess we don't want that. I wish this would autofocus not so sporadically because we like to do a close-up autofocus but we also don't want it to be like seizuring the whole time it's fine we'll see the gentleman's from Holo taco just come off in one big piece Ooh, 
That's nice. See, I do like that. It's so funny because I find with Holo Taco products, even if you're not using like a peely base, they come off pretty like solid, which is nice. It's less, less hassle. So the plan, the POA, the plan of attack is we need to oil up these nails, oil up these cuticles, um, push back the cuticles, protect the fingies while we do the nail polish remover. Do a bit of shaping. I don't think we have to do much, but just just to say, and then we and then we paint. The only thing I'm a bit concerned about too, though, is I'm getting towards the end of my quick dry top coat, and I find when you get to the end of a top coat, it starts getting really gummy. So this this I'm concerned about, but it'll be fine. It'll be fine. It's fine. Don't have to worry about it. <laughs> I am, I am trying to psych myself up to get the most newest Holo Taco Autumn collection, or at least some of the items. She has like a build your own bundle option on the website. And so I think it'd be cool, I would build my own bundle because I do need more top coat. I do have some leftover Holo Taco top coats, but again, they're at like the end of their life and they're all junky and gummy. I was thinking about possibly like <laughs> mixing the ends of my top coats together to try and get a full top coat situation going. Um, and I do have like nail polish thinner that I could do. And then I'm hoping that maybe like a Franken top coat could be achieved, but I don't know what the formula quality of that would be. So we'll see. But yeah. So fun, fun uh, little anecdote from the dentist is uh, the, it was the hygienist. So the hygienist, um, She's, she was really nice, super chatty, um, really like, I don't know, just like very nice and accommodating. And I guess I realized too that uh, like a lot of people really are afraid of the dentist or have a lot of phobia around the dentist. So she was really good at just like walking me through every single thing she was doing. Like before we started, she's like, we're going to do this. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. If at any moment you want me to stop, like raise your hand, just be like, you know, whatever, whatever, like you're in control of this all this kind of stuff, which is really nice. I don't have any like issues with the dentist, so it didn't matter to me. I was like, whatever, this is fine. But it was really nice that she does that with everybody just to sort of put people at ease. I think that that's really good. I have the first iteration of black nail polish. Yeah, it doesn't really blow. Yes. Yeah, that I'm the same. It's unfortunate because I was the same way with the royalty blue, but she's since discontinued that one. Uh, which is a shame, but yeah, I have I have to do the same issue with the not milky white. My not milky white doesn't dry down. It doesn't, yeah, it doesn't evenly dry down. So I, I'm the same. I need to, I need to get a new one that has the better formula. I need to get an appointment in. Yeah. See, that was the thing. That was the reason. That was one of the things I had to do too. That was the f last week's appointment was the filling because I do think my filling was like falling out or whatever. And so that was the first reason why I was there. Um, but yeah, so the hygienist was really, really nice. And then um, I'm, we're, you know, I'm, I'm sitting in the chair where we're just chatting and whatever. And then she, like, before we start, she's like, oh, I just have to ask um, what your tattoo is. And so I was like, oh, and she goes, oh, is it the elements? And I was like, yeah. Um, she's like, that's really cool. Um, are you like, spiritual in any way like are you you know into like wiccan or anything like that and i was like oh like i don't know my friend more into than i am i would say like okay i think i dabble i said i'm just really like i just really love nature and sort of maybe more like pagany whatever and she's like oh okay so like natural wiccan you're like fat you know your internet your fascination with nature and whatever and i was like yeah i guess so cool like i'll be called a natural wiccan that's fine and so she's like yeah 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 this is that and then she kind of she's like very not quietly but then was sort of like yeah me too and i'm like i see what's happening here you're trying to find a witchy kindred spirit and ma'am you have found her so yeah my hygienist is a wiccan and i absolutely love that for her and for me um because even too when i got into the appointment i noticed she had a necklace on and she had a couple pendants on it and i couldn't quite tell but one of them looked like it was a pentagram so I was like, I see you, witchy sister. I see what's going on here. So that was really cool. She was like, are you into, like basically like sniffing me out to make sure that I was like fellow mystical friend. And I was like, oh, absolutely. Absolutely I am. <laughs> so that was awesome. <laughs> 
Yeah, so she was very nice. Very, ni very nice, very nice fellow, fellow witchy friend, which was cool. It's annoying because she was like, oh yeah, like you probably can only need to like see me kind of once a year or whatever. It's almost one of those things where you're like, damn, I wish I had like more sensitive teeth and had to come and see you more often because I think you're awesome. <laughs> Can I just like have tooth problems just so I have an excuse to see the hygienist more frequently? That's a weird thing for me to do. But yeah. So it was a success. She could tell by run full pot. <laughs> Yeah, just like fully break my teeth. And then it's like, and then it, see it's one of those though because it's the hygienist, it's not the dentist. Because what happens is, I, yeah, I, I go full tilt and it's like, yeah, you need full reconstructive dental surgery. That's something the dentist is for. And I'm like, damn it, we went too hard. We're trying to get the hygienist. So we basically just want to have like a mild outbreak of gingivitis, maybe. Is that is that how we get in with the hygienist? How do we escalate to, uh... I do know uh, my sister-in-law, she has really sensitive gums. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so uh, I think she goes to her hygienist every six months. So, but yeah, it's fine. <laughs> it'll just be very exciting annually. I'll be like, gonna go see my Wiccan friend and it'll be like, what are you talking about? I'll be like, I'm going to the dentist. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it was, it's, it's always very interesting to me because obviously like when you look at your teeth, you're like, you just see teeth. Obviously there's like discoloration and whatever, but like the fact that they, I don't know, everything just looks off white on your teeth and they go, no, that's plaque, that's enamel, that's whatever. And I'm like, how do you know? How do you know what you're scraping off isn't a solidly good tooth? I guess that's what, you know, they go to school for that, but I find it fascinating. I'm like, how do you know, how do you know what, what is, what is the bad shit and what is the good shit? but they know. That's why they're good at, you know, they're good at their jobs, you would hope. And then, yeah, she could tell that I use like an electronic toothbrush just by looking at my mouth. And I was like, that's cool. And I said, yeah. <laughs> Basically what happened is Liam went to the dentist, the same dentist, and they recommended this, this like uh, electric toothbrush. And then he went out and bought them for both of us. So I've now reaped the benefits of that. So yeah, she could tell from my teeth that I had an electric toothbrush. Uh, she was asking about like flossing and whatever. And so I was telling her what I do. And then she recommended these little, I don't know, I can't remember what they're called, but they're basically like fluffy toothpicks in a way. They're like fuzzy toothpicks that are helped like to get into the little crevices of your mouth. Cause apparently sometimes if you're just using dental floss, like you need something a little bit wider to assume, like to help it get into like the crooks and nannies of everything. Uh, so yeah, but the thing was, so I've seen these in the, in like the pharmacy, in the grocery store, whatever. And they're these like, um, yeah, like fuzzy, fuzzy floss sticks. But the thing is they come in a bunch of different like diameters, like different sizes, obviously depending on like how big or small the gaps in between your teeth are. Um, and so I've seen these and I'm like, well, I don't know what size I'm supposed to get. You know what I mean? Like they don't have that option. So if luckily she was able to go through like a couple of the different sizes to be like, you need the red fuzzy toothpicks. I'm like, cool. Now I know when I go to the grocery store or whatever to buy that. Cause the last thing you want to do is like buy the wrong size. And then they like, don't, they don't do what they're supposed to do. And then you're out however much. Cause honestly, like dental stuff isn't the cheapest. So you want to make sure you're not wasting your money. Just trialing out different little flossy dudes. I guess I can put this camera down a little bit more. Basically what I'm doing is I've just put uh, a bunch of cuticle oil around my nails to soften my cuticles um, and also help protect my like naked nail and my skin from the acetone when we go to remove the nail polish. That is the plan. That's what's happening right now. Um, yeah. So I have, again, this is like, all of this stuff is because I, you know, what was it? Three, four years ago, went down a Simply Nailogical rabbit hole. So the reason why it takes me like two hours, three hours to do my nails every time I do them is completely because of her. <laughs> it's her fault. Um, 
But yeah, just because I want them to last. And like this manicure, it was pretty much like a week before things started really chipping and stuff. So I do think that like, you know, shit works, which is good. But yeah, so this is just like, um, I'm old school, manual toothbrush. Hey man, it's all good. If you're doing it right, it's all that matters. As long as it gets the job done and your teethies are nice and clean, however you, however you can do that. <laughs> like, you kids all stuff moving up. Okay, yeah. We, did you ever have, cause isn't it, um, I know they have a thing with like washing your hands. You know, if they say like the right amount to wash your hands is like if you sing happy birthday two times, like that's the right amount of time to be, uh, that's amazing. Not a filling in sight. Kudos to you. Good dental hygiene. Excellent. I'm lazy, so I don't help again. Yeah. Yeah, you did tell me that you inherited some crap teeth. I think mine, I don't know. To be fair, my parents have, their teeth are all like disintegrating and stuff like that, but who knows if that's a genetic thing or if that's just a them thing. But yeah, so uh, yeah, I remember reading something they said like when you wash your hands in order to have like sufficient time for the soap to like do its job to get the germies off, you're supposed to like sing happy birthday twice and that's the length of time you need to wash your hands for. And so I'm pretty sure they had something similar. I'm not sure if it was like a specific recommendation for length of like how long it should take you to brush your teeth. And so when I was a kid, we had kids toothpaste that the toothpaste would play a song and you were supposed to brush your teeth for the entirety of that song. But the problem with that is that it started as soon as you opened the tube, right? So you open the tube, the song starts and you've not put the toothpaste on your toothbrush and like stuck it in your mouth yet. So I remember me and my brother having to like very quickly, like pop it open quickly, like just get it, get it, <laughs> get her in there as fast as possible. Cause you didn't want, you know, the what, two, three seconds of the song. Cause then you're like not brushing your, cell, your teeth long enough. Or we'd have to like, see I love how that was our logic. It wasn't, oh, we should know that it takes about two, three seconds once we open the cab and put the toothpaste on to start brushing our teeth. So we should then brush for a few extra seconds after the song is done. That wasn't how we did it. It was try to get the toothpaste on the toothbrush as quick as possible, not to waste valuable song time that you're meant to be using brushing your teeth. Sounds fancy. I just said that we're blue Colgate, yeah. Wasn't there one, do you guys remember there was like a Colgate um, toothbrush or toothpaste that had the little, you know how the, there, there were those like little breath strips in like the 90s and 2000s, there were such an array of different breath freshener options that these ones basically looked like little tabs of acid, but they were um, like meant to be, um, like breath fresheners, like little breath freshener strips. And so I remember there was a time, I think it was probably, it was Colgate or one of them, where it was like a gel toothpaste that had teeny tiny little blue breath strips in it. And it was like the breath strip toothpaste. You had strawberry toothpaste, that's cool. I don't know what flavors I had. I think I just had the traditional bubble gum. You had those and you loved them, yeah. But yeah, I remember there, I feel like I remember there being a toothpaste that was like a, uh, a collab with the breath strips. <laughs> the other ones too that I remember were like little beads. They were like tiny little beads. They basically looked like, you know, when you get like with like Beanie Babies or like, you know what it is? Which is really bad is they kind of look like blue versions of the beads in a silica pack which is not good because you obviously aren't supposed to eat those, but they were like little, little mini breath mint bobas essentially that came in a little container. That was another breath freshener trend of the, or an attempt at something cool and different to freshen your breath in the 2000s. Can't have teeth with the glycerin in it, so now I'm very limited. Oh.
you're not? Yeah. <laughs> you mean you're not supposed to eat the silica gel packs? Yeah, sorry to say. Yeah. I'll have to tell all those kids who are eating Tide Pods, you cannot also eat the silica packs. Okay. Oh. That's interesting. So that really limits... I guess that means there's probably quite a lot of brands. That's always so annoying when it's like a random ingredient that just happens to permeate everything. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Nails have been, cuticles have been thoroughly poked back. Now it's time to get the bottle. You said these stupid all natural toothpaste and also use fluoride wash. Right. Huh. Oh, interesting. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. I remember when I was trying to explain, like I called, I called someone like a crunchy granola lady and Liam was like, what does that even mean? And I'm like, you know, like crunchy granola people, the ones that are like eco, but it, to like a culty degree. And he was like, I don't know. I don't know what that means. And I'm like, am I making that shit up? Do you guys know what I mean when I say crunchy granola person? <laughs> yeah, if you're rude enough to eat your own placenta. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it you can get your placenta like turned into little capsules or something like that? That's funny. I don't know what the what the medicinal benefits of it are, but I guess because there's like nutrients in it. Yeah. Is it one of those things where it's like it seems like it's new? It there's full of nutrients, but like actually it's not. Well, a little bit of aspartame tastes really bitter to me, yeah. Do you get headaches from aspartame, Hellas? It was wild, actually, because um, when my brother and his girlfriend were here, she really struggles with the taste of aspartame. And um, we were looking at drinks here to try to find something that didn't have any chemical sweeteners in them. Um, and the only thing that she found that didn't have any artificial sweeteners in it were was Mountain Dew, I think. It was like something really random because a lot of them here, it seems like they have natural and artificial sweeteners. To be fair, it's not always aspartame. There's like a couple different ones that they seem to add in everything. But like even our squash, like stuff we didn't even realize had artificial sweeteners in it. And I'm wondering if it's due to like legislation reasons where people are like, oh, if it, has this much natural sugars, then it like, you know, gets taxed more. Cause I know that was a thing like full fat um, soft drinks get are, are more expensive than like the diet versions of things. So now I'm wondering if the reason people do that is they take their drinks and they put half and half in it so that they can get around that price increase. That's my conspiracy theory. But yeah, it suddenly was like, oh, everything has a chemical sweetener in it. And I'm like, that's bananas to me. I never realized that because it was something I never like thought about until they were like, oh, does this have an artificial sweetener in it? And then we were like, everything in our cupboard does. Every liquid in our cupboard is like that. I'm the weird soapy coriander. Oh, are you? Yeah, so you have like genetic, a genetic marker for, for intense bitterness flavor. I grew up on aspartame, so it's okay with me. It does taste like chemicals sometimes. Yeah, Mountain Dew has other things in it. Yeah. You also get the soap flavor, but you like, oh, no way. <laughs> that's cool. Hey, that's the best of both worlds. You're like, I get the unique flavor combo, but also I'm not mad about it. Yeah. <laughs> 
takes my breath away and it feels neat. <laughs> that's a fun, that, that's a fun little sensation to add to your food routine, you know? Every once in a while. It's kind of, it's like, it's like what spice does, but not spice. That's fun. It's a fun little, <laughs> I like that. I don't have that. I, I don't have the soapy coriander thing. Um, Liam and I, we made um, gluten-free beer battered fish tacos the other day and uh, put some coriander on it. And it was actually really nice to have just like fresh herbs. I really need to try to like grow or like buy the living herbs from the gar like from the grocery store and then leave them on the windowsill and like actually take care of them. A few years ago, we tried, like in the pandemic and stuff, we tried to do that. I actually got a rose, like a, not a, an herb garden box for the windowsill online. And it was doing really well. It must not have been in the pandemic because we left for, oh no, it was when things like opened up. We went away for a weekend and like didn't get anybody, like didn't tell anybody to come like water our herb garden. So when we got home, it, would, it had all dried up and everything had died. But it was like doing okay for a while. So I feel like if I actually like put effort into maintaining it and didn't just like abandon the plants when we go places, I probably could have a thriving herb garden. So that's an option. Just cause the, the idea, like the option to have fresh herbs in a di like in food, I find is really, it just like elevates it and it feels like less heavy and more fresh. Um, but yeah. The only thing though, cause that's the other thing too, right? When you buy fresh herbs at the grocery store, you need it for like one dish to put a little sprinkle on it. And they're like, here's a giant ass bag. So now we have a giant ass bag of coriander and we don't obviously have multiple dish options to use it. So that's annoying. So I think that's the re like that's maybe the appeal. Yeah. That's maybe the appeal of having like the living ones. But luckily garlic can last a decently long time, I think. But yeah, we we have the same thing. So we we store our garlic and our uh ginger. Um but yeah, the ginger's absolutely like petrified. Like it's a little dinosaur bone of chonkiness now. Actually, are so much better. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, one of the best smells is when, like, when you're starting to make a dish and the base is usually like diced garlic and onions, and you're starting to like warm that up in a pan, and just the smell of it that permeates the room, like, it's the best. The smell of garlic and onions frying in oil is just so good. Top tier smells. Okay, first hand, super naked, scandalous. Baked garlic and butter, yeah. Oh, I've not had baked garlic, like big elephant garlic, like baked in, a, I've not had that in a while. I don't think I've had that in a like, really long time, but that would be so good. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely, I'm team garlic. I'm the type of person where when like a recipe calls for like two cloves of garlic, I'm putting in five. Like that's just a suggestion. That's not, no. <laughs> Like when you're baking, sure, we'll follow the instructions. But if you are saying, oh yeah, put, you know, two cloves of garlic. No, we're tripling that shit. It's good for us. Maybe hunger over here. Yeah, right? Usually we don't start talking about, this is actually, this is probably a new record, guys. We usually don't start talking about food until like two hours into stream. We're not even an hour in and we're already like, so food guys. It's gonna be a long stream. We're gonna be, yeah, our mouths are gonna be salivated when we got into stream if we keep this up. One of the things I have to do tonight is uh, do some research into gluten-free food options in Dublin. 
um, cause we're flying into Dublin and then before we make our way to the wedding city, um, we're going through there and we figured like, cause we're going to like a kind of a more smallish town. And so it makes more sense for us to probably get gluten-free options in a major city. I'm hoping there's like a Pizza Express or something nearby. Um, from the quick Googling I did though, I think it's a lot of pubs, uh, but I need to uh, find out. Oh, no way. Yeah, if you could, that would be amazing. If she knows. We're looking for, you know, town center, easy to get to dinner spots. That would be amazing, actually. <laughs> but yeah, so that, that's on my that's on my agenda tonight. I also need to gear up. Um, it's funny because I was trying to figure out the, uh, oh, yarn hype, angelic dreamer. Hello, hello. Good afternoon to you. How are things? How are things? Yeah, my, my friends are. Um, they're getting married in Ireland this weekend. So I am a guest and the invitation said formal attire. So I'm a little concerned because there's nothing formal about me, but <laughs> I figured one way to, to get there is to have nice nails. <laughs> so that's what we're doing today. But yeah. Yeah, we have a wedding. So our friends are getting, we have one set of friends getting married this weekend. And then in September, we have another set of friends getting married. So we will be doing this again at some point. So yeah, I'm glad you are well. But yeah, the other thing I need to figure out, so um, Liam works in, in London. And so one of the things that he does, cause he commutes via the train is we, he has a tablet. Like one, he'll either take his Steam Deck and play games or he'll take his tablet and he'll have downloaded shows from like Crunchyroll or Netflix or whatever to watch on route. Um, and I was trying to think about what I was going to do while we were on the plane. I have this book that I've read like three chapters of that. I'm like, I should probably read a book. But I remembered that, um, the newest season of only murders in the building has come out and I really want to watch it, but I know myself, I don't know if I've talked about this before, where I know for a fact that if I sit down in front of the TV to watch a couple episodes, next thing I know I've binged the entire series. I just know that I'm going to be wholly unproductive. I have no self-control when it comes to watching TV shows. Um, and so knowing that about myself, I've not sat down to watch it yet because I know I'll not get anything else done for the rest of the day. So I was like, wait a second. Liam downloads things to watch on his commute with a tablet. I have a tablet. I could possibly do that. Um, so I'm going to try to do that tonight. But the only thing was, is my tablet has a USB-C charger and all of my headphones are the i like the Apple iPod phones which either have the jack which my iPad doesn't have or they have the adapter which is a lightning cable adapter that works with my phone which then doesn't work with my iPad so I was like shit I don't know what I'm gonna do but we found these um so the other option is like Bluetooth headphones. I don't have any Bluetooth headphones, but then Liam went rummaging in his drawer and pulled out these ones uh, that, let me grab them. I think I ended up getting them for free one day. I think what had happened was before I was on like my Vodafone contract, I was on a pay as you go and you could get points to redeem for stuff, which is a great system. They then phased it out. And then when I joined a plan, I feel like I got less perks than I did when I was on a pay as you go, which is silly. Uh, but yeah, I ended up getting these like wireless running headphones. And so we were like, okay, cool. Like maybe I'll try this out. The only problem is though, I think first of all, cause they're like inner ear ones. They're like these sorts of guys, which isn't the worst, but I do find like, I don't know. I think they might be too big for my ears cause they're a little bit uncomfortable to wear. But the other thing that really throws me off because I went for a walk with Shadow in the morning and I was like, oh, I'm going to test these out. I don't think I like noise canceling headphones, guys. 
like, I, like all of my headphones, cause they're all the corded ones, none of them are noise canceling. So I can like hear my surroundings. And I could understand like when I went, when I walked to the dentist earlier, I stuck them back on and they were quite nice. Cause I could just like zone out and do whatever. But like when I'm walking with shadow, I feel like I need to be aware of my surroundings. I need to know like where the cats are hiding. Like if people are coming, like what's going on. So it was a little bit on, it was, it was very weird. It was very strange. I'm not used to, to noise canceling. I don't know how I feel about it. I would like to have, it's a little bit of a loss of control. I think that's what it is where I'm like, okay, cool. I can hear T Swift in my ears very clearly, but like, I have no idea if there's a bite coming up behind me. And I feel like I need to know that. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. So I'll have to, I think I'll have to have different headphones for different things. So I think this will work for the plane. Um, obviously after we hear all of the, all of the, you know, pre-flight, whatever, whatever's and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, so it's interesting. The only, I do like though, I do like, um, the Bluetooth aspect of it. I, you know, I don't realize cause of course it's only, it's, you know, everything I've only, the only thing I've ever known is corded headphones. So like my Apple, um, like I headphones, they're not AirPods because they're corded, but like corded headphones, like that's all I've ever known. Um, so it was quite nice to not be like, have random strings kind of flailing. Cause then especially too, like when shadow gets hyper and stuff like that, like, and he jumps around and things. Sometimes he catches his paw like on the cord and then it either rips him out of my ears or out of the phone. And like, it can be a bit of a to-do. So that was a nice touch. Um, but yeah, the noise canceling part. The thing is though, I don't like, you must be able to, but I've almost this, I, I feel like most good quality headphones now, one of their main selling features is that they are noise canceling. Like, I don't know, I'll have to take a look, but I'm wondering like, does it exist a decent quality Bluetooth head, like Bluetooth earbuds or headphones that are not noise canceling? Or do we, like, cause I have a, I feel like they're all gonna be noise canceling, but we'll see. Okay, nails are nakey. Next step is to do some shaping. The only thing I really, I don't really care about the, like the length is fine. The only thing I like to do sometimes is as the nail grows out, you sometimes get this like really like harsh line between two things. The AirPods can be changed in between a leave. Oh, okay. So you have the option to make them noise cancelly or not. That's interesting. I wonder how that works. Cause I would assume the only reason things are noise canceling is because of like their like, I don't know. That's so interesting. I just assumed that the reason they were noise canceling is because of the way they like suctioned around, like within or around your ear. I didn't think that like there would be tech to make it. Yeah. I don't know if pros. Okay. Okay. So maybe, maybe it's just, okay. So it's not as bad as I think it is or not as not an option. But yeah, I'm less, I'm not necessarily concerned about like filing down the length. I'm more concerned about just like getting the edges to be crisp. Noise canceling sometimes makes my Right. Yeah, that was the other thing too that I thought was interesting. When I stuck these in my ear, I suddenly felt like I was almost underwater and that was a weird sensation. I think it is just, it is cause those are like the proper in ear, like ear pluggy type headsets. I think cause they're meant to be like a fitness one. So when you're running, you don't want to worry about them like popping off. So they pick up the center energy and then combat it. That's so interesting. That's really cool. Like the science behind that is wild. That's really interesting. That would be cool. Like the option to swap between noise canceling and not. Um, just because like I said, sometimes it's nice. Like when I'm walking by myself to things, but when I'm walking with shadow, I would like full, full spatial awareness. 
with a side of tunes, you know? I don't want the tunes to be the be all and end all of the of the walk. Hi, Ninjay! Good afternoon, how are you doing? How are things? Your Bose ones have different settings too. Yeah, Liam has Bose headphones and I feel like he's he got them years ago and they still work really well. The only thing he had to do is the like covers on them because they're over ear ones. The little covers, um, like sort of not like disintegrated, but kind of wore out, but he was able to replace them. So yeah, we're going some, yeah, amazing. How is the progress going on that one? I assume it's still your super jumbo Mondo expansive, fabulous picture cross stitch. How's that going? But yeah, not too concerned about the length just about the edges. And then what we'll do is we'll cut any hangnails um, and then we will, before we start painting, we'll then go over the nail with a bit of acetone just because we want to dry out the nail bed as much as possible because that ensures maximum stickage of the polish to the nail. And then we get painting. I have silly small ears, so the Bose in-ear ones are the only ones. Oh, interesting. Oh, so they are in-ear ones. That's cool. Because I would have thought that maybe like teeny tiny ears would be too teeny tiny for the in-ear ones. But I guess, yeah, the over-ear ones, if your ears are small, they would almost like slip slide around, wouldn't they? Perfect. We'll take a look at that in just a second. They come with like three different, oh yeah, yeah. That's the other thing too, because I think Liam was saying, I don't, I assume that these ones must have come with different like thicknesses or whatever of them. I have over in. <laughs> That's cool. It's multi, multi-purpose, multi-dimensional, multi-everything. I guess not multi, it's like duo, whatever. All right, let's check out this progress pick. This is bananas, no day. Like, honestly, it's gonna look like a painting when you're done. Like, look at this, you guys. Good, kudos to you for gritting, obviously. I, again, I've never gritted. I know we, we, we talked about before how you can get pre-gritted um, Ada cloth and stuff, cause like, you need that for this. This is nuts. So much confetti, truly. I was having issues like when I was working on that Princess Jasmine one, that felt very confetti-esque. I almost wish I would have done some sort of a grid for it. Um, I think I am, the way I'm working on it is very grid-like. Um, but yeah, I'm not physically drawn out a grid. How's it look? Yeah, right? It told you, it's gonna look like a painting when it's done. It's all, it's just the gradient, like even just this gradient in the corner of the ceiling to the, like the most, I don't know, the highest tip of the paint, like project, that, just that alone. Bananas, absolute bananas. Last stream was nine hours long just to finish the bottom left section with the teacup. Jeez. Wow. That's amazing. And that's the thing, right? Cause sometimes like when we work on stuff, like when I work on that Howl's Moving Castle one, it'll be like, you've done like 200 stitches. And like, that's a lot, like 200 stitches is a lot. And then you look at it in the grand scheme of the project and you're like, that's not even a dent. That's like maybe 1%. And you're just like nuts. That's, it's gonna look so good though. You have to get that professionally framed after. It's gonna be so good. Like you're gonna put so much effort into it, you need to go get that framed. So it can be displayed in all of its gorgeous glory. Yes, I've just under 7%. That's only 
That's incredible. That's so good though. That This is like your magnum opus. Like this is the project, you know? That's so cool. Why are there lyrics in my in my pretzel rocks? You're supposed to be instrumental. It's fine. We'll allow it. We'll allow it. Okay, first nail shaped. Second nail needs to be shaped. Symphonyological is also the one who taught me all about the power of a glass nail file as opposed to the shitty little emery board ones. Sassy Cass is also working on a huge six, 667K Lord of the Rings cross stitch. Wow, that's incredible. That's so good. That's gonna look so cool when it's done. It damn near might kill you to do it, but it's gonna be amazing when it's finished. The thing that I always get concerned about is like, even with just the little cross stitches that I do, I'm like, where am I gonna display this? I think that's why I'm like looking at doing smaller ones that I then can put on like pins or like stitch onto clothing and stuff like that. But I guess if I had like an accent wall that was like, this is the accent wall for this piece. Maybe one day. It's all oranges and browns and blacks. That's the other thing too, cause you know the reason why there's so many stitches is because it's so detailed. But that level of detail is gonna require like just the tiniest tonal shade variations. Yeah, how's his um, Minecraft cross stitch going along? I know he was gonna work on, was it a character a day or a character a week? But yeah, he was working on his Minecraft one, unless he's doing a different one now. Slowly, yeah, hey man, aren't, aren't all cross stitchers? <laughs> <laughs> Stitching slowly, let's be real. Let's be real. <laughs> He's only done one character and half another. Okay, okay. I guess I guess the novelty has worn off a little. Is there something more exciting in his like personal zeitgeist right now? Is there like a new mobile game or something that he's like way more interested in currently? He'll come back around though, I think. Okay. Every time I get concerned, again, I wanna keep the length, but sometimes I get a bit concerned that sometimes the length is a bit too long and that gets a bit dangerous. I say this as they are probably the shortest nails um, to many people, but. You also got new nails. I mean, he's always on Roblox or YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, something about that attention span, right? <laughs> I feel like my nephew is the same way. He's like, I'll do some analog shit for a couple hours, but then give me back my tech, please. And you're like, okay. Pigs in Discord, I want to see. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Noongday always has the coolest looking nails. Oh, they're little. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry, these are adorable adorable little magical rainbow kitty cat nails. Excuse me. Amazing. I love it. So cute. Right? The little paws are adorable. They're so cute. 
Look at the toe beans. Look at the toe beans. So cute. Oh, that's amazing. You always have such cool nails. Truly. Okay, are we happy with this guy? This finger like curves inward, so I have a hard time seeing if the nail itself is straight. In terms of like, or like the shape is even and uniform because the finger is not even and uniform. It's fine. I'm gonna buy some dungarees. No way, that's cute. That's really cute. You'll be so coordinated. See, I to be fair, I I do take uh I so little little enjoyments in life when I can color match like my nails to like the shirt or the dress that I'm wearing. I just feel like a little bit more put together, you know. Or I'm like I feel like oh, Run and Fly is such a cool company too. Oh my god, yeah. I'm sorry. Is that not you as the model? Like I can picture you in this. This is so you. That's so cool. Yeah, Run and Fly have such cool stuff. Every once in a while, cause again, I've not done the dungarees overall slot, like, you know, overalls thing in a long time. Um, oh wow, okay. Indie 80s synth moment, that's fine. Uh, it's one of those things that like, I, I do the jumpsuits, like I'll do a jumpsuit, but I've not taken the plunge into overall territory, and I don't know why. I don't know why I'm resisting, because there's so many cute ones. party cats on a play suit too yeah that's the thing i think maybe i could do play suit that would be a good like start or like i've seen the ones that are like uh they're like dungarees or overalls but it's like a skirt instead of pants and i was like mm, maybe maybe we'll see But yeah, I think I've seen um, Run and Fly. They had ones that had like really cute dragons on them. Oh, cute. Of course you found the ones with mushrooms. Of course you did. I knew they did mushrooms too. Mushrooms and axolotls, that's a fun combination. See, you know though, the only thing is I have, I have not issues. I also think boiler suits look really cool, but I, it's one of those where I think they're so cool, but I don't know if I'm cool enough to pull it off. Do you know what I mean? Like there's a mushroom boiler suit and I'm like, but could I? Could I pull off an all over pattern like that? Maybe, I don't know. 100% you are. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. Yeah, I don't know, something about a boiler suit. I just think it looks so cool. But then I also know that it like screams mechanic vibes, but like then, you know, that's fine. <laughs> it's like we need to pee with, that's the thing. To be fair, that already happens to me when I wear play suits. So that is already an issue that, you know, in jumpsuits, there's nothing more I was gonna say, there are definitely more things, but like there's something so vulnerable at when you have to go to the bathroom in a public place and you're wearing like a play suit or like a jumpsuit and you're like, I just have to be naked in this bathroom stall now. There's no ways about it. Unless you like, you know, get, like make a DIY butt flap or something on your, on your leggings. It's not, or not leggings on your jumpsuit. Like it's not an option. So I already, I already have to deal with that. So that would, that wouldn't deter me because I already have that problem. Happy Friday! What color are we doing? We are doing 
This color is called You're a Gem by Essie. And then this is Angora Cardi by Essie. So we're doing sort of like a purpley mauvey. And then this is like a holographic sort of rosy color. That's the plan. Basically what I had on my nails before, because last time it was like we were trialing it out, uh, testing, testing. We were doing some trial and erroring. Uh, in terms of what we're going to, what are we doing? We're doing these nails uh, for, for this wedding reception that I'm going to. So I was like, oh, that looks cute. So now we're just like redoing them because they've all chipped and stuff. <laughs> oh yeah, I have a weak bladder and there's been times when I haven't got down. Oh no, that's awkward. That sucks, yeah. Yeah, the struggle for that is real. I feel like they're, cause again too, you're like, yeah, but maybe not. Like maybe they need to put, they need to put like little escape pods, little escape pods for, for leggings and, or for jumpsuits and things, I think. But then again, like the whole thing, but then maybe we shouldn't work. Cause I think the thing that's what pulls, like, you know, what throws me off about like dungarees and stuff like that. And which is weird cause it doesn't happen with play suits. I think maybe the, like denim or corduroy structure that usually is in dungarees and things like that is it gives me like little child vibes but then i'm also like who cares you know because i was just thinking about like oh yeah they need to put like little little emergency butt flaps or something on jumpsuits and play suits for for adults to do emergency trips to the bathroom you know and then I was like, but that might look like, you know, like a diaper hatch, like for children. And then I'm like, who cares, man? Kid core is a thing. Why? Like, you know, there's some, there's some items of clothing that are made for children that are meant to be simple and functional. And I don't know why I think I need to deny myself the function and simplicity of those things in adulthood. Why would I, why should I do that? You know? But we'll see. I still I still have mental hangups about it, I think. Okay, just trying to make sure this is shaped decently. I can go over it with this like it's meant to be like a buff thingy, but I use it just to sort of clean out over the edges of the nail if they're not like fully smooth this guy's kind of i don't know but then again it's like subtle differences that you're like i don't know who gives that much of a shit <laughs> it's like when i was having my my dilemma about whether or not i do light color or dark color for for the janky toenail and i just did the dark color i just did angora cardi all over the toes and it didn't it looks fine so I think I'm just overthinking it. Again, I don't know why the term formal scares me so much. Jeez. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I think what it is, is it's like, I know, like my friends are very chill. I think the problem too with like, sometimes with like weddings and things is it's not just, depending on the situation, sometimes it's not just the couple whose opinions and lifestyle choices and things are taken into account on that. Like sometimes people's parents or like siblings or whatever have more of a, of a say in these things. And so even though I know the couple, my friends and they're super chill and like wouldn't care that much, I don't know like how traditional their families are and like all that kind of stuff. And so you don't almost like you want to make a good first impression. And so I find like with weddings, it's almost like there's some people feel very particular about specific traditions and specific ways to do weddings. And so if I don't abide by those, you know, potentially artificial guidelines I feel bad you know what I mean like I want to have a really good first impression of a lot of these people because like I've met like our friends parents like one half of them but the other one the 
one of my friends, she's from Ireland, so all of her family's in Ireland, and so we've not met any of them. And so I don't know, there's like a kind of, there's a bit of an anxiety of the unknown in that situation. Um, but yeah, the plain pink quartery. Oh yeah, that would be cute if you did that. I wear the same dress like four different weddings. 100%, the only reason I have two, so I have two weddings to go to this year. The only reason I have two dresses is because I made one. And even then the entire time I was like, oh my God, this, maybe this isn't formal enough. I don't know if this is gonna be formal enough because I made it, but I think it's okay. Um, but yeah, I'm the same way where I, I would easily be like, okay, cause now, now I have two formal dresses. So now every, all my other friends who still have like need to get married, um, they're getting one of those. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like that's what's gonna happen because, especially too, cause you don't wear them very often. And usually formal wear is more expensive. So you're spending a lot of money on an item you're only gonna wear once. And then the next time you're meant to buy a different expensive outfit you're only gonna wear once. That's a lot, that's a lot. And so out of formal wear and so mindful first impressions. Yeah, like it's, I don't know, it's kind of intimidating. But I also think too, like then I also have to remember that I am one person in what's presumably gonna be like an over a hundred person wedding. So like, if I, you know what I mean? Like I might not even be introduced to everyone. So I have to, I have to, you know, in moments like this, it's like, oh, that's fine. I don't need main character energy. I need like back of the line, you know, not even like best friend side character energy. I need background actor energy going into this. And then I think it'll be okay and it won't matter. <laughs> Same outfit every year, no one cares, yeah. America's party used to give me such anxiety and then I bought a tuxedo, I wear it every darn year. That's so good. That takes so much pressure off. That's the thing and it's so funny cause it's so similar. Um, it's like uh, how, I don't know if anybody else watches like uh, people who are into um, like fashion talk about the Met Gala and how all of the like Met Gala reviewers are always so pissed off by all the men because they're like, they just think they can just put on a suit and then they're like, that's it. They're gonna show up to this event. And it's like, they, it's like, they're so boring, but then it's like, I'm sure they don't feel that pressure. They're just like, yeah, whatever. It's a, it's a formal event. Formal event equates to suit, wear the suit, good to go. You know, and there's something so freeing in that. Definitely. Okay, I think, I think I'm happy with this. We're just gonna actually, okay, we'll go over it with this just to buff out any of the edges that are not. Yeah, we'll see. I have strict instructions from my mom to send photos of my friend's wedding dress as soon as possible because she watches a lot of Say Yes to the Dress. And so, uh, so she has like ideas of like what each person is gonna wear. And so she needs to know like, oh, this is, so she sent me like links being like, this is what I think your friend's gonna wear for her wedding dress. So you need to let me know if I'm right or not. Cause she's also very competitive. So she creates these like little arbitrary games for herself to be like, I wanna know. Pedro Paso. Yeah, that was different. That was a nice change to be like, oh, I'm gonna like do something a little bit different than just wearing like a long, just like a normal ass tie. Do you wear a different bow tie each year? Cause you know, that's so cool too that your tuxedo also has a bow tie. I love that. That's so cool. Yeah, that's so awesome. And then it's also like, that's like a fun, subtle way to like express creativity as well. You know, I feel like ties and bow ties are a nice like fun little way to like, you can almost get away with being quirky because you're already wearing a tuxedo and the bow tie, like the whole outfit itself screams formal. So if you want to have a little like pop of color, a little pop of whatever. Um, yeah. You're the pro, oh amazing. Oh, you're gonna be rocking the coolest swag. Coolest, not swag, coolest outfits, coolest stuff. I love this, the dress, I love the wedding. Yeah. Yes, I have seen a lot of four weddings. Yeah, we used to watch that one quite a bit. 
Yeah, when my mom comes over, we found all of the like uh, YouTube clips of all the Say Yes to the Dress shows. So in the evening, she always has to like watch a bunch of Say Yes to the Dress before going to bed. Well, now she's like, he does, he does. Sometimes he's like really out there, but at least, you know, they're pushing the envelope and doing something different as opposed to like, here's a black suit. Like no one cares about your black tuxedo, Bradley Cooper, do something different. I don't know why I called out Bradley Cooper like that, but you know. Okay, I just wanna make sure. I feel like most of my clothes are 20 years old. I thought about trying one of those online clothing services. Yeah, I've thought about that too. But then I'm like, the only problem I have with those is then it's like, okay, then you need to go about returning what you don't want to buy or like whatever. But yeah, I have thought about that too. I think that would be fun. Cause yeah, I'm the same way Galloway where I have clothes that I like probably wear into the ground. I've had like the same clothes. Some of those clothes I've had since like university. Some of them I've even had since high school that are like oversized sweaters and stuff like that. And I'm like, they're still going strong. And then at what point do you go like, oh, I probably need to move this on. To be fair, I did just do a call um, recently. I can probably do more. Cause I think I have some clothes in storage that I probably don't need anymore. You said don't tell the bride. I think so, yeah. Yeah, cause that's, isn't that the one too where the groom will like even pick the bride's wedding dress and she's like trying on the dress but isn't allowed to like look at it until the day. It's very, I think, isn't the rule with that where it's like the show will then give them so ever much extra money to towards the day if like she agrees to it. I don't wear fancy clothes, I don't need them all. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm thinking about with this. So next, is it next week? No, the week after, um, I have that job interview at the chiropractor's office. And to be fair, I do have some business appropriate clothing, but it's all black because the last job I had was at Pandora and you had to wear all black. And I feel like, yeah, at Pandora, it looks fine. But like in a receptionist office, I'll look like I'm constantly going to a funeral. So I have to go and check. I also think that maybe this place is like a little bit more like, um, what's the term? Like kind of corporate casual. So I think you can get away with that a little bit better. Um, but we'll see. Yeah. They have a budget of 12K. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I've not seen it in such a long time, so I'm not sure what's what's changed or what the level of it is. Yeah, thank you. We'll see. I've, I've not gotten the job yet, but it'll be interesting um, to, ex yeah, to, to, to do that, to see how it goes. I'm manifesting it, though. Um, it's meant to be very, um, like, ad hoc, like, only, like, once or twice a month, so it shouldn't impact, like, stream or anything, like, or crafting or anything like that, which is cool but it'll help ease me back into like a more traditional working environment, which is nice. But yeah, so I'm looking, I'm looking forward to it, but we'll see. But yeah, that's the thing that I'm like, I don't, I don't really have like a lot of interesting business appropriate clothing. Cause I did a similar thing where like, I did a cull of stuff. Cause I was like, I'm never gonna work in an office. This is like however many years ago. And now I'm like, oh, I might be working in an office. I keep smacking my face on this and it's becoming a problem it's fine it's fine i'm just getting um when you file your nail down it doesn't always take every single layer of your nail off and sometimes they can pop out afterwards so i'm just like taking my other nail going underneath it and just making sure that i've gotten all of the little stragglers before we start hi pete good morning good afternoon good afternoon i hope you're doing well i hope things are good Shadow down here. Yeah, he is. He's on the sofa. He's chilling on the sofa. Like I'm burning. That's the other thing too. So I worked um most of the other jobs I've had again until I did um what you call it until I worked at, in retail at Pandora. I worked in jobs where I was working with kids or like working with youth. I was like a youth worker, and so that is like you're meant to almost be casual because it's meant to help you relate to the like the kids that you're working with. So like some days. Like this, like sometimes I would rock up in sweatpants cause I was running a program that evening and I was like, it's fine, you know? So yeah, I know it was much more casual in 
in the places that I've worked before. I've never worked in like a corporate needing to dress up like in a specific style every day. Except for except for when I worked at Pandora and that was like a uniform, essentially. Um, wait, something new. <laughs> I got my teeth cleaned. That that's the that's the newest thing. Uh, and then I don't think anything else new. <laughs> Used to go and wearing those huge cyber traps with all the chains. Oh, no way! That's cool. That's cool. You're like, I'm bringing my rave self to work today. Even better. It's been a hard last few days. Oh, that's unfortunate. I'm glad it's starting to be a bit better, though. I'm doing well. I'm currently in the middle of prepping for... Uh, we're going to a friend's wedding in Ireland this weekend. So this is, this is why we're painting our nails today, because this is some of the... Uh, um, last minute primping and prepping that I need to do to be appropriate formal wedding guest. Thought it was your hair. <laughs> yeah, no, that's the only thing. I guess I, I washed it today. It is, it is currently in a bun because I couldn't be bothered to dry it. So that could be it. Does it look shinier? Cause it's like still damp. <laughs> No, I'm just getting rid of any of the like little hangnails. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Feel free and I can, I can, uh, yeah, definitely. No pressure though. If you want to talk about it, I'm here. If not, it's all good. But yeah, I hope that, I know, like you said, things aren't going very well, but I hope that there will be an upward trajectory if not right away, slowly but surely. That would be, that's, you know. I always want that for all of you. I want good, positive things to always go your way. I understand that that won't always happen, but if we can, if we can get more good days than bad, then we're winning, you know? Just making sure that there's no scragglies and then we can finally start painting. Clean off all the little yucky nail pieces. Push you over here for now. Clean you up later. Okay, that's done, that's done. We have cleanup brush and orange stick on standby in case we do any any fuck ups that need attending to. Okay. Oops. It's fine. Okay, we don't need that. We don't need that. We don't need that. We need this for a second. And now we can bring all these into the fold. But yeah, so we were using Hollow Taco Long Lasting Base. Essie, you're a gem. Part of their limited edition. Uh, uh, collection. Angora Cardi and, and Sally Hansen Insta Dry that is running low. So hopefully, just as you move your head. Yeah. So when um when Liam needs the the upstairs where the stream room is, we then come downstairs. Uh, and we got a fun bookshelf. And because I'm down here more frequently, I figured I would put some more little nicky knackies up here. Which is fun, actually, because I feel like because of the narrowness of where the stream corridor room is, I can't really put as many little funky doodads on the wall. So it's nice that I get to stream in front of this bookshelf because so, there's a little, little more character and personality. Um, I figure I was new. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't even know if I said what was new, like that there was anything new. I don't think there's anything new. But if you see something new, 
let me know. Because then it might be new to me too. <laughs> Okay, just getting, so we're just drying out the nail bed to ensure optimum stickage of nail polish. Yeah. So I'm very excited to see what the, uh, <laughs> the non air conditioned manual car rental is going to be like. Remember I told you guys about this, how for this wedding, cause it's a bit further out of a town center, we need to drive there. So we rented a car and the car rental website, the cars were starting at about like 70, 80 pounds for the two days that we needed it. And there's a drop down menu of like filters of the different things that you can choose or whatever. And so I was like, well, I can't drive a manual. I can only drive an automatic. So it'd be nice to share the driving responsibility with Liam. Um, it's only an hour and a half one way, uh, but just in case it would be nice. So I clicked the automatic filter. The options went from 70 pounds for two days to 125 pounds for two days. And I was like, okay, never mind. Go back to the manual options. And then I noticed that air conditioning was one of the filters that you could click. And I was like, surely all of the vehicles that you can rent in this year, 2023 would just all have air conditioning. All of the air would just be on all the cars as a default. Apparently not. So I clicked the button to be like, can we please have air con in this vehicle? Again, went from 70 pounds for two days to 125 pounds. So I'm like, oh, okay. So we're literally getting, and I'm like, I have a feeling that we're gonna rock up to the airport and get one of those cars that has like no power window. So we're gonna have to manually roll the windows down with no air conditioning. I'll be surprised if there's an AM FM radio in this thing. So it'll be very interesting. <laughs> so I, I, I will have to, I'll have to take photos and report back as to what, what fresh hell will, will await us um, at the airport, but we'll see. Mm hmm. But yeah, so it'll be interesting. But again, it's only an hour and a half drive and it's for two days. It should be okay. Hi, Provacus. Hello. Hey. Um, Check your posture. The, the no AC talk is uh, the rental car that Liam and I have for the next few days when we're in Ireland has no air conditioning. Not really. Most car manufacturers will make you pay for some features. Yeah. That's interesting. You would think like I could understand some things, but I just assume that like air in a vehicle was just standard, right? I hope so. I hope we're not flintstoning it all the way to all the way to the destination. That would be awkward. <laughs> I think I remember seeing, or Liam saw something, where there was like a um, a car, or he read up something about cars having like certain levels of horsepower, and that you could, um, what was it? It would, like, you would have to get a subscription service to unlock the higher levels, like, so I can't remember what it was, but it was something like, if you want your car to be able to go over a certain miles per hour, you had to pay more. Um, if not, it would only like go like, so it basically like locked out at certain points. I can't remember what it was exactly. But yeah, there were things that it was like, oh, there's gonna be subscription services to utilize features in your car. Your car has the option to do all of the bells and whistles, but you're gonna have to pay for all the bells and whistles. Hi Saul, good afternoon. How's your week going? I hope it's on the up and up for you as well. Hope you're keeping keeping cool, keeping good. We're just doing some stretching. Oh yeah, tea break. Cheers, friends. Okay, it's time to get down to business. Time to do this. All is well, it seems amazing. All the fingers and toes and arms and eyeballs crossed. It stays that way. 
I love to hear it. I love to hear when people are winning. Cause that's all I ever want. Do -do 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 -do. It is funny, the irony with that is that when that bit comes on to, you know, to signal, okay, it's time to get shit done, I then get excited and take time to dance and sing along to that song. So it's a little bit counterintuitive, but also still gets the job done. <laughs> okay. So first step is long lasting base and you're always supposed to wrap the tips of your nails because that ensures that you have an accurate seal between the um, <laughs> the nail bed and the nail polish. Because if you don't wrap the tip, then you're just gonna have basically like a sandwich and an easy access point for like hair and nails and shit and that has, there's more, there's more chippage involved. My friend says Kia, it's really funny, both front doors electric window power buttons, but the back is old school. Really? That's so interesting. I've never heard that before. That's so cool though, like in a way. Cause then it also helps cause it's like, you know, I know that, um, a lot of cars that have the power windows in the front and back, they'll then have almost like a child lock button to make sure that the kid's not like opening and closing the window a bunch. But I guess that eliminates the problem for that if the kid has to be able to manually do it himself. That's pretty clever. Oh, I know, I know. It's not, don't wrap, it is wrap the tip. I, I'm aware that that could be misconstrued innuendoly. Is that a word, innuendoly? <laughs> this was good for Sunday, yep. Got to do some walking, a lot of sitting down and getting up during the event. Yeah. Oh, all the fingers and cross. I don't know if like, again, it seems so random. I'm not sure if you found that there's anything that you can do almost like as a preventative measure or to put things in place to sort of minimize a flare up. I'm not sure though. I feel like from what you've told me, like it can be quite random and there isn't really anything that you've noticed that like helps once it starts. But yeah, again, all the fingers and toes crossed, no flare ups. That's part of having a three door car is no back windows for kiddos to play with. That's true. That's a fair point. The only thing with that is when it's a three door car, it's then when you have, when you try to squeeze adults in the back, it can be a bit of a pain in the ass. But for kiddos, no problems at all. For legs, no. For hand sleeping with braces can help. Okay. Yeah. Those would be very hot and uncomfortable. Right. Hopefully, I don't know like if where you are, but here, thankfully, it's meant to be cooling down a little bit. Um, obviously, it's been so hot and muggy the last little while. I wouldn't be surprised if like, yeah, that would just like to, to have more layers on than you need to when it's like 25 degrees at midnight is like no fun. But thankfully, or hopefully, again, knock on wood, it is gonna cool down a little bit and then that might make it easier to then be able to be less uncomfortable with more layers, you know what I mean? Okay, first. One hand, we have long wear. By the way, since your last stream, 660 acres were burned down in a while, but really? In Greece still. God damn. I'm glad they were arrested. So the wildfires in Greece are still happening, eh? Oh, I thought you were painting your toolkit. <laughs> Yeah, no, this is this is the painting toolkit, not painting my toolkit. <laughs> but there there is still time. We still could. Okay. That is a bit uneven, but hopefully with all the layers of the other polish it'll now level itself out. Hi Entrails! Oh hi bud! 
how you been? How are things? Yeah. Oh, that's good that you've got that they there's more firefighters coming in. Nail painting cash. Yeah. Sorry. Right. My bad. Again, sometimes, sometimes the jokes fly over my head. I know I have glasses on, so it like looks that maybe I'm intelligent, but sometimes right over the head. Right over the head. <laughs> yeah. I hope you've been well, sir. I know you are working very hard on your podcast, and I think it's been popping off for you, which is so exciting to see. I love seeing my friends win. But yeah, I hope things are good. <laughs> no! Nothing to do. Nothing, nothing to do with the quality of your jokes is purely my inability to understand them. And that's on me, not on you. Things are good, just trying to get back up into Twitch. Oh, amazing, yeah. Cause I know, I don't know if you've had like changeover with your like, sometimes when people like their work schedules change or there's transitions and stuff like that, it can be difficult to like get into a routine and then be able to then put Twitch back into that equation. But if that's working for you now, I'm glad to hear it. I'm glad to hear that things are happening, that you're able to get that back incorporated into <laughs> but yeah no I never I never blame yeah I would never blame you for the jokes you tell Saul only my inability to understand them <laughs> that, it's true it's true I may look intelligent but it's all a facade To be fair though, you know what it is, Some, it's not, it, blah, blah, blah. see, I can't even, I can't even words, I can't even do words. I was gonna say, like half the time it's not even a matter of the intelligence, it's a matter of my ability uh, to, to be awake. You know. I, you know what it is, I'm, I'm gonna blame the paint fumes, so any miss, any discretions, any misunderstandings of my brain and any words that I misspeak and just forget, if my brain preemptively enters dial-up mode before 6 p.m., uh, I'm gonna blame the paint fumes. Between the paint fumes and the acetone fumes, we're getting, we're getting a little loopy over here. What are they gonna do when we need to be painted? They wait in a cuticle. Ha 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 ha. See, I got that one. I understood that one. Because again, guys, puns are my main form of co comedic enjoyment. I love a good pun. That is the majority, that is, that is where most of my comedic enjoyment lies. So I don't know if you did a pun earlier. To be fair, you might have done. Um, but yeah, I love a good pun. Yeah, let's blame Saul for his joke. Shame on you, Saul. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would be very hard pressed. I would be, well, hard pressed. I'd be very impressed if you knew a family friendly comedian entrails. <laughs> I'm like, really? Do we, do we know one of those? Do one of those exist? All right. Quick draw or long, long lasting base is done. Check, check. One down. A few more steps to go. These jokes keep going on you even after you perish. <laughs> like nails. Very nice. Very nice. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. See, I can tell that you're feeling good because you're just like dishing them out. Dishing them out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We we all have our we all have our tolerances. <laughs> You're like, if you don't gross me out with your humor, I don't want it. Signed, defiled, entrails. Whereas I'm like, I just love a good pun. I'm like, that's all I want. <laughs> just want puns. Okay. Wow, so nice. Nothing's happening. See, they're not naked anymore. You can't tell. But they're, they're, they've got, they've got some clothes on. We just gotta wait a hot minute for these to set a bit more and then we're gonna be doing 
your gem on the three nails and then we're gonna do Angora Cardi on the two nails. I was debating just doing one accent nail in Angora Cardi, but I don't know if that will, I don't know, sometimes I think it looks weird if you just have one random nail that's a different color than the rest of them. Whereas if it's a pattern and there's two, then it's not bad. I'm not sure. Sounds very petty, Kirsha. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying to think what else, I don't know. Oh, it's so funny, not funny, but I was meant to video chat with my friend uh, yesterday, but she mess she messaged me. And uh, this is just like the, the, first of all, adult friendships. Second of all, international adult friendships. I definitely see their ring nails. Yeah, I feel like I've seen that too. So I am debating just doing the ring fingers, the darker color, and then the rest of them, but we'll see. Um, no, uh <laughs> That was genuine. I It was genuine. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I was going to video chat with my friend the other day. She's like very pregnant right now in another country. Like she lives in Canada still. We were going to video chat. It was her first son's second birthday the other day. Um, and so I messaged her and we were meant to chat and she's like, we have a virus. Like, I'm so, like, I'm so sorry. I'm so brain dead. Like, can we reschedule? And I'm like, absolutely. Like. You are literally like nine months pregnant, like within your birth window and you have a virus and your two year old son has a virus. Absolutely, we can reschedule. Trying to reschedule, cause it'll be like, oh, I'm available, but like only in the morning. And that's like, you know, midnight for her. And it's like, oh, I'm available at this time, but that is this time in the morning for you. There's a five hour time difference. So trying to encounter a time difference a time that works for everybody. And then also her induction date is like the 6th of September. So we have less of a, um, less than a week, like to reschedule. Cause I'm like, once you give birth, I'm like, why? I'm not gonna try to be like, hey, can you video chat with me? I know you like literally just gave birth, but like we need to catch up. No, it's not gonna work that way. So we'll see how it goes. We're meant to schedule it. So next Friday, I'm gonna have to cancel stream again. I'm sorry, I'm such an asshole. Uh, but I'm going down to the coast for the weekend for my mother-in-law's 60th birthday. It was already her birthday, but this was our present to her. Um, and so we're leaving in the early afternoon because of checking in. Uh, but then we're scheduled, so we can schedule, so I've scheduled to talk to her right before then. So that's a bit like, I feel like I'm double booked. It'll get done, but it'll be a little bit stressful, but I think it'll work out. But we'll see. Do me a favor and take a picture of your thumb and then make it the picture for the stream. <laughs> I actually don't make thumbnails for my streams. I know I probably should try. I feel like that would be more, um, you know, you're meant to have a cool snippy clickbaity title. I just use the auto generated ones. I'm lazy. I'm lazy bones. I don't wanna, but I should. Even if I just like come up with a formula of like, this is what the thumbnail will look like. And then in every stream, like take snippets of like images that would correspond to that maybe. Um, but yeah, I'm not as multimedia savvy, but you know, here you can take a photo of this one. E -e -e -e. Do you ever do that? Do you ever, when you're a kid or even as an adult, do you ever pretend to squish people's heads? I guess my head is too big for this. It would have to be like, <laughs> nope, I missed it. There we go. We'll go. Grr. No, it's not working. And that's not lining up. <laughs> I tried. I tried to switch my head. It didn't work. It's just me. No, uh, I swear more people. I'm not the only one who squishes people's heads. If you've not done it, you should try. It's quite, it's quite amusing. It's quite amusing. It's a fun time. See someone walking the distance, just be like, ee, and just squish their, like squish their head. It'll be fun. I promise. <laughs> Okay, we are ready to paint. I think I am going to only do one accent nail. Crafty Gremlin made me feel confident about the decision to just do the ring nail. And so that's what we're going to do. Oops. Don't get nail polish on the table. Again, got to wrap your tips. We're gonna probably do two or three coats of this because it ends up going on quite sheer. And we want even coverage. So, heck yeah, do it girl, yeah. Um, 
But yeah, so this one will probably end up because it is quite a sheer uh, polish. So we need to slowly build it up. If we do a really thick layer in an attempt to do that quickly, um, it'll take a really long time to dry. And then we are opening ourselves up to more smudging. And you know, I don't think smudge nails is very formal. So we need to, we need to not, we need to not do that. So thin layers that will dry in between. That will be the plan. And then we're also not painting all the way down uh, to our cuticle because then you can flood your cuticle. And if that dries as your nail grows, you end up potentially with chippage um, and you don't want that crusty chippage happening there. So that's why you always leave a little bit of a gap when you paint your nails. Could be a new look, mm-hmm, possibly. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised because I feel like there were um, different, because I know you can get uh, do you guys, did you ever have the, uh, like, crackle top coat nail polish where you would stick it on your nails and then it would create this sort of, like, crackly effect? It was not good. It never turned out very well, but that was an option. So, possibly, uh, a thing. You did! Yeah, right? I think we all, you know, that was, like, a 2000s thing just for funsies, and then it was like, nah. Oh, you had the magnetic polish? I never had magnetic polish. I did buy some, this was like within the last few years though. I think it was like a random stocking stuffer at like the drugstore at Christmas time. The uh, heat changing nail polish that goes on one color. And then like, as you, you know, as your, your body heats up the nail polish, it turns into a different color. Those were actually kind of cool. The only problem is that the colors were kind of boring. So I wasn't as big of a fan uh, of them, but. Cool, first one down. Yo, my God, yeah. <laughs> it did, it wasn't, it, it, it was a look, but it wasn't a good look. And to be fair, I definitely feel too, like there was a time, again though, not formal, but there was a time especially during the like rise of the pop punk emo scene in the 2000s that it was almost like aesthetic to have chipped black nail polish or uh, another option was to use white out on your nails and then if that flaked off that was also considered very aesthetically pop punk emo at the time but again that was not that was not formal <laughs> Okay, we're doing ring nails. I have to remember, because sometimes I'll be in this, like, I'll be in, like, a painting flow state, and I'll forget what I've decided each nail is going to be. So this guy, this guy here is going to be the different color. Okay. You can't really tell right now because there's no like direct sunlight, but once this dries, um, once we're all done, I can, again, another nailogical hack is if we put on the flash of my phone, we can then see the holographicness of this nail polish. But when it doesn't have direct sunlight on it, it just kind of looks like frosty or almost kind of looks a bit sandy and textured. That was another thing too. I feel like I remember having like textured nail polish at one point. It was like specifically meant to be kind of like gritty and sandy and stuff. I don't know if that was a fever dream, but I feel like that was a thing. I don't know why. It feels like the trends in the 2000s were like a lot more like wacky and like zany in their inceptions. Whereas, I don't know if it's just me, but it almost seems like 
like the trends or the different like yeah like trends now seem a lot more tame and basic but maybe i'm just not i'm not in the loop you know maybe if i was in the loop i would then be able to notice that like the trends now are like really wacky and stuff but they don't seem to be the same way that they were in the 2000s like they'd be like, go oh, try this weird novel thing. And you're like, I don't know if it was trendy, but it was just like a thing that was available. Like we already talked about how like there were so many different like breath freshening options. There were strips, there were like mini boba silicone baubles. There was like all these different options. Um, nail polish had all these different types of textures and whatever's and all that kind of stuff. I feel like even same with jewelry. Did you guys ever have the, um, the, like, either the, it was, I had earrings, but I think you get bracelets and stuff too that were almost, like, the design on them were like a spiky neon ball, and they were usually multicolored. I think they were, like, they glowed under UV light, but they were, like, a plasticky, they almost looked like a plastic pom-pom that was then you could get really bright neon colors and they would do bracelets and like earring studs and stuff like that. I feel like you get belts that had that sort of texture on it. The only problem with that, same with like any sort of like jelly plastic rich wrist watch, is that if they got dusty, like they would get so gross because they were so difficult to clean because they were that sort of jelly consistency. Okay, we're just gonna wait on these to dry a little bit. Usually, when I paint my nails and I'm not streaming, I'm either watching something on TV. Well, to be fair, I'm usually watching something on TV and I'm also playing Best Fiends while my um, nails dry. <laughs> In between. Yeah, the Roby Spark. Yes, 100%. That makes sense to me. The belts with the studded names. I never had this. I knew the studs, but I never saw ones with studded names. Definitely the scrolling LEDs though. I've definitely, like the belt buckle had the scrolling LEDs. I do remember that. I don't know the studded names though, but I know obviously the studded belts and you can get ones that were even like multicolor studs as well. Yeah. Oh yeah, the, the, the spiky, the rubber spiky balls were, were a moment, I feel. To be fair, you know what it might have been? I do think that like, obviously there was in the 2000s, it was very like emo, pop punk sort of renaissance. But I do wonder if a lot of the sort of stuff, like the trendy things at the time, like for, for us, I think they were a lot, like it was a lot borrowed from like rave culture. Cause I feel like a lot of that neon, the stuff that like glows in the dark, the LED light up things, like all that kind of stuff that feels very like rave culture to me as someone who's never experienced rave culture. I've just been like aware of it. Um, yeah, I feel like that's like very much a thing. So yeah. Interesting. Oh, geez, Scoob. Shadow gets to hang out with his grandparents this weekend. We're gonna drop him off tomorrow morning. He doesn't know. Can't say the trigger word though, because I've already told you if we if we mention his name. Oh, I realize I've not even painted this nail. I should do that. Uh, the name of his of his grandma, like the what we call her. He then like assumes that it's the house, and he gets really excited and will not calm down. So we can't we can't say. It. But yeah, the grandparents are are gonna look after the Bubba while we're in Ireland, which is awesome because you know it's basically like his second home. He does chill there. He does enjoy it, so it'll be fine. It'll be a good time. It was funny because my nephew had a sleepover with them um this past weekend so they're getting to see they're getting to see all the grandbabies of of the two-legged and the four-legged variety <laughs> okay this one needs another coat definitely this one didn't go on very evenly at all but that's fine that's why we do another coat all right um, 
Okay, these are not bad. I think we can probably go in with another coat for these. This guy will have to leave a little bit more because I literally just did them, but we can definitely do these guys again. We might be able to get away with only two coats for this. We'll see. Usually what happens is I like hold it up to a mirror, or not to a mirror, to a light source, and if I can see my nail through it, then I'm like, you need another coat. But this this two coat on this guy is actually not too bad, so. seems okay. The other option too is it might not have been, yeah, I don't know if it was fully dry. So then when I put the new nail polish on, I think it moved some of the stuff. It's not bad though. I'm not too mad about it. It's fine. We've not had any, like cross cross your fingers, knock on wood, that we don't have any, any real bad schmuckage that we can't, you know, salvage this. We're doing all right so far. That one's probably gonna need a third coat. The only problem I find when sometimes when I wrap the tip is sometimes I end up like taking some of the top nail polish with it, which is really frustrating, but it's not that bad. We'll see, we'll see. Okay, cool. We will, this has this guy. Yeah, we'll paint that first. There's always one hand that looks nicer than the other. I guess because it's like you have to paint with your dominant hand. So obviously my left hand usually is the superior looking painted hand because I'm using my dominant hand to paint it. Whereas the other one is using the non-dominant one. So it's not as steady. Cool. My left hand always looks better. Yeah, exactly. Sometimes I'm quite impressed when like my right hand turns out not bad. Um, just cause again, it is the non-dominant hand. So it just feels like the level of jank is, you know, much higher, at least the potential for it. But I'm getting better at it. I think cause I do that, like I paint my nails so frequently that thankfully it's, Not too bad. If anything, I'm almost like upset when my right hand looks better than my left hand. Cause I'm like, listen, my, my left hand should know better because my right hand was the one painting it. I'm like, you should know better. The left hand doesn't know what it's doing. And if it does a better job, then like that's concerning.
Okay, you can tell this is my non-dominant hand because I'm like so focused. It's like when you apply mascara, you're like, can't breathe because then shit's gonna go everywhere. another coat on this too leave it to dry a little bit Okay, now we just need to see, like there's little spots that aren't as opaque, but I don't think it's enough that it's noticeable. So I think we'll probably, once we let this dry a little bit more, we will just uh, clear coat that. I am, I think I wanna wait for it to be really dry though, cause I think that this top coat is really gummy. So I don't wanna accidentally pull the paint while we're trying to glide the top coat on. But we'll see how she goes. Um, <laughs> I'm still like backing and forthing about the hair that I'm gonna be doing for this. Cause I've already explained to you guys or talked about how like, I want to have my hair up because I assume I'm going to be quite warm. Mind you, it is going to be colder there, so it might be okay. Um, and I spent like three hours watching like, you know, casual, easy updo videos for medium length hair and it was just not happening. Um, so I'm trying, the goal is to maybe do a bun, like a low side bun. Um, and so I've done that, but I think the problem is too, when I try to make it look like natural like a little messy or whatever it just ends up looking actually messy like you know how when you watch people do their hair and then they're like oh yeah like you want it to be like tousled and stuff like that where it looks sort of like strategically cute messy whereas when i finished doing my hair i went downstairs and asked liam how it looked and i was like is this like cute messy or is it like messy messy and he was like, you look like you just got back from a run. And I'm like, oh, so not cute then. <laughs> I'm like, oh, if this is post like jog hair, then it's absolutely not cute. Uh, so <laughs> we're still not sure what it's gonna be. I used to have a little donut, I would put my hair in a bun. Yeah, um, I have these like spin pins that are meant to just like be a substitute for multiple, um, I love you hate me to say it. Yeah. <laughs> he said he liked the bun though. It was just the, you know, the decide. I think cause the thing too, is I'm wearing these hoop earrings and I find that if my hair is up like this, it just like the earrings look huge. And I don't know like if that's just a me problem cause he was like, it looks fine. So I want it to be a little bit looser so that I like my ears are not so prominent. Um, but yeah, so yeah, I have these spin pins that are meant to like replace up to like 10 bobby pins or something like that. So the way you, you spin them into your hair and then they sort of lock and then that's meant to help secure things. So I had this bun in the side and so I would do like the shake test, right? And so I have this hair in this bun and then I do the shake test and then it's like ping! Just like an alfalfa, like a sprout of hair springs out of the bun. So then I take a bobby pin and try to like shove it back in there, shake the head, ping, it's like another one or the same one. And so then I have a like, you know, 25 bobby pins in my hair that are not actually doing the job of holding the flyaways that I'm trying to capture. Um, so I have packed my curling iron. As much as I was like, I'm not gonna curl my hair, I'm gonna try to do something without it. I think what's gonna happen is I'm gonna curl my hair 
and have it in like a low side ponytail so it still is like up essentially it's like pulled back so that should make it less i shouldn't get as warm um because it'll be like off off you know most of me uh but then that way it'll be a little bit easier to to make fancy because again i don't like my my way of doing formal hair is just curling it because i'm like oh it's different than my usual hair and then therefore it's fancy um but yeah i guess you know what it is though honestly like again the whole point is i want to put it up but my hair is usually up in a bun in a ponytail all the time so if anything formal for me might just be my hair down and brushed and straightened um, but again, that wouldn't stop me from getting warm, so. Oh no! I got squash on my nail! Please don't, I, I don't want to dab it. How do I? It's fine. <laughs> there was like a tiny bit of like extra on that lid and then it like ricocheted off. It's fine. We've not smudged. It's okay. <laughs> lick it? I'm not gonna lick the wet nail polish! <laughs> No. Then I might really start talking nonsense. If I'm inhaling the fumes. Now it's wet on the table. This is not okay. There we go. Fixed it. It's fine. It's okay. It's okay. Okay. It's fine. It's fine. Hey! Check your posture! It's tea time! Ba -ba -ba. It's lengthening time! He's licked them to smooth them. Oh, interesting! To be fair, I remember I have this, um, thank you for the health check for Bacchus. I have this memory of going to, there was a girl, um, I was friends with and I was at her birthday party and I was painting her nails in this like sparkly blue color. And then she kept going away and like showing her cousins and then coming back and there would be like a huge chunk swipe out of the nail and I'd have to keep painting it because she kept on like she'd come back and be like oh man i smudged it oh man i smudged it and i'm like okay so i'd repaint it and be like don't smudge it turns out she was taking the nail polish and then wiping it on her tooth to make her tooth look cool and like blue and sparkly and then going to her cousins to try to impress them they were like older boys or whatever and then she would go to it and she says yeah they think it's cool like my blue sparkly tooth is really cool and i'm sitting there being like bitch what are you doing? And then I think I think the mom got mad. I don't think they got mad at me. I think they got mad at her. Cause I was like, good, it's not my fault that she's chewing on her nail and making her tooth blue. Like, geez. That's interesting. I never knew that. I guess that's a thing. So you would do that to like smooth out the nail polish? Yeah. I was like, what are you doing? She was like, I was trying to make my tooth blue and sparkly to impress my cousins. I was like, okay. Waste a nail polish in my opinion. There you go. Cheers. All right. So if with the quick dry nail polish, we don't necessarily need to go full dry. It can be a little bit damp underneath, not like super damp. It's, it's dry, it's dry to the touch, but not to the smoosh. Like if we were to press our nail, like our nail on, or our finger down into it, it would probably create some, some divots, which we don't want. Okay, let's warm up this gummy nail polish and hope that it's okay. But yeah, I'm really tempted for the new um, Hollow Taco Fall collection. But also, because I genuinely... I've just been buying drugstore top coat and, like, it's been working fine. But, you know, I want the good good. It gets to the point where it gets so low that you can't actually, like, scoop it up. I guess you can kind of... With the uh, nail polish. Or with the brush, sorry. not enough. 
We don't want to like try to pull it. You're supposed to sort of glide it across the nail. But we can't glide it if there's not enough polish to glide. So now this is potentially going to dry wonky. It's fine. We'll try another one. I have those two jellies and they were so pretty. Oh yeah, I love the dark colors too. That was the other thing. The uh, like the really dark rainbow colors, like the dark um, linear hollow ones, those look really nice too. I do love like a pastel purple. Um, yeah, like a lilac and stuff, but I like um coupling that with like a black nail polish or something to go with it i like that contrast um but yeah usually like pastels i'm not huge oh my god i'm so sorry to hear that that's really weird that seems really performative Cause it's like, if you're, if you're grieving the loss of someone, you don't necessarily need to get everyone else involved. Like that's your grief. The only thing I guess would be like, if she's posting photos that you're in maybe. And then it's like tagging you in the photos to be like, oh, look at the memories of this person that you had with them. Oh, she's been a Karen for years. She was on her nineties. Right. Yeah. Okay, so you've sort of already, like, said your, like, you've already come to terms with the situation. Still doesn't make it, like, any less sad, but I guess in a way it could be that, like, you know, if they've been in a care home and they're that, they're elderly, they could, you know, if anything, sometimes it can be quite nice. Like, it sounds really weird, like, counterintuitive, but, like, can be almost like a kind of, like, a nice peaceful thing of, like, oh, wow, like, I'm so glad that they're not in pain anymore or suffering or anything like that so as long as that's the experience yeah this this top i need a new top coat it's fine we are doing what we can but we definitely need a new top coat next time we do this last time smoker was last time she remembered me and that was my wedding oh wow mm-hmm so it's been a while, yeah. We probably could have, oh, see, we probably should have done another top coat. Damn it. I looked, I didn't look at my thumbs. This one definitely needed another coat of nail polish. It's fine, whatever, we're over it. Oh, damn, I didn't realize. Cause these ones look really good, but this guy looks a little sad. We just won't draw attention to him. It's fine, we're just gonna tuck them. There we go. These are cute. Looks fine. Okay, that's fine then. <laughs> From a distance. No one's gonna be staring at my hands. Again, we're do we're giving background character energy at this wedding. We don't need we're not we're not my main characters, so it doesn't matter. You know? Like if I was a bridesmaid, then I would maybe feel a bit more concerned. Um, but I'm just a guest, so I'm not that concerned about it. This top coat is old and gunky and it's pulling the nail polish. That is annoying. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to think if I have another top coat. I don't think I, do. like again, if I, do, if I do, it's gonna be similar to this. Oh well. It's fine.
The purpose of a top coat is to like seal in all of the paint and then even everything out and make it all shiny and wonderful. Um, so hopefully this there's enough going on in here that it's doing its job, but we'll see. I might have to go in, cause like there's also some bubbles in this guy. So I'll have to try to get rid of those. We can't say we didn't get our money's worth though. Cause we are absolutely Yeah, the brush, the brush can't get into the crooks and nannies of this. I'm also aware, what I, what I, when I say that I mean, I mean nooks and crannies. I assume you guys know that, but that's what I'm saying. <laughs> okay, I'm trying to scoop the polish and uh, listen, cut it out. Oh wow, hello synth music. You have returned. Right on this very high intense moment. Yeah, this is this is the energy that we need going into this. Cause now this is drying and I don't have enough nail polish on the brush! Descended, yeah. I know, yeah. Are the fumes getting to me? Maybe. It's more just, again. We are doing our best with the tools we have been given. We are excavating the last bits of this polish. Vibing, yeah, you have so much patience. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I find like painting my nails quite therapeutic. I do enjoy the process, you know, when I have fully stocked supplies. This, on the other hand, is uh, not <laughs> fully stocked supplies. Yeah. <laughs> Basically now I'm just gonna go in and feel out which ones feel okay. Put it out the window by now. <laughs> Sorry bro, it's a no. Yeah. <laughs> Being like, we don't have time to be formal. Yeah. No, it's true. Yeah, I think we do have to try to go in with another coat. Really, yeah, it basically takes me like, like as a bare minimum, but that's from like start to finish. Cause like we had to take off old nail polish, add new, like, you know, all of like the whole thing, like the entire process. Um, for me, if I'm not doing anything super fancy is probably two hours. Oh, nail stamping, yeah. I have a couple nail stamping things. Um. I, I got polish for it too, cause like, I guess you need thinner kind of polish to go with it. Um, I've done it a few times. I think I would be intrigued um, to try it again on, like to help with the nail decal. So you know how we made the mushrooms? I think it would be cool, it would be helpful to do the stamping onto the mat and then picking them up and placing them. Only cause the stamper that I have you can't really see where you're placing the uh, 
the decal on your nail. This is so crusty. You can't, I don't know if you can tell. How, yeah, like look how wonky that is. It's so uneven and goopy. <sighs> so rude, so rude. Okay, there's only so much we can do about it. Oh, see, that was an actual decent application. I wish that application went as well on the other nail, but it's fine. Yeah, exactly. I wanna, I need to pick up like uh, one of those so that it'll be easier to see through the nail. Cause yeah, the one that came with my stampers did, does, doesn't do that. Okay, come on nail polish. Let's do this. But yeah, you can tell it's on its last legs too cause it's so goopy now. It's fine. to have this pool here. I think I, ha I think I have a system now. Pull the nail polish and then have it cascade over the brush. And then we pull it out and then we use it. You, we use it. This is jajank. Look at that. Blech. See if we had if we had a full if we had a full top coat, this wouldn't be happening. These these this unevenness. See from down here though it looks fine. So we just I just need to not yeah, we just need to There we go, looks great. Yay! <laughs> you might mess up. Yeah. Truly. Truly, it's high stakes, you guys. High stakes utilizing the last dredges of a top coat. These nails scream wedding to me, excellent, thank you. Thank you for validating me at this time. <laughs> okay, this one, this application turned out okay. Yeah, exactly. This one again, when it when it was full, it definitely does that. Um, but yeah, this one, see this one turned out okay. This one, so you can see the difference. I don't know if you can see it, maybe not. But yeah, there's like ridgy, bumpy unevenness on this one. And then this one is kinda, yeah. Yeah, this one's better. Okay. Again, operation, operation, tilt, cascade, and paint. Oh no, we lost a bristle. That's awkward. Now we have to try to get this bristle out of the nail. Ha, oh, geez, Scoob. Oh, no. Why? I need tweezers and I don't have any. Okay. This is, this is, this is a problem. There we go. There we go. I got it. We might have sack. We might have. Okay. Did we? Did we schmuck these in the process? I think it's okay. I think they're okay. That was. That was. Wow. <laughs> okay. It's fine. Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> anyway. Let's continue the process and hope that no more bristles from the brush decide to play any funny games. This music's really like upping the intensity of this. This is how I feel on the inside. Okay, that one did really well. Watch though, now this one where it's gonna be noticeable is gonna be really bad. It's fine, Let's. we just gotta have faith. Let's believe that this is gonna be superb top coat application. Yeah, truly, it's definitely giving Stranger Things vibes, definitely. We're hoping for superior application of the polish. That wasn't bad. It could have been much, much worse. We are gonna take what we can get. Turns out right hand might actually look better than left hand at the end of this. Which again, is always so funny to me because it doesn't know what it's doing. Okay. Last top coat and then I think, I don't know, am I gonna, do I try to redo this guy? Or do we leave him? He's so uneven. He looks like a raisin. He's so like dimply. Maybe we try, we try to redo this nail. And then we'll maybe do some cleanup around the edges. And then we'll be done. Yeah, this is janky. That wasn't bad though. I think because now I have the technique down a little bit better of how to get this nail polish out, I think it's okay. What was the song in Hunchback? I'm too far, you know. <laughs> really? <laughs> Is that the song? Probably. But yeah, that's how, yeah, that's this. That's what this nail is giving. This nail is giving that. Yeah, it's giving, it's giving raisin. Sun-dried raisin vibes. We do not want. You've never seen The Hunchback of Notre Dame? Damn. It's wild. I loved Asmerelda growing up. I still do. I think she's a badass. Um, I was, I dressed up like her. Uh, in junior kindergarten, was it junior kindergarten or senior kindergarten for Halloween? My mom made me a, an Esmeralda costume and I had an Esmeralda Barbie doll. I definitely made that worse. It's fine, we're leaving it now. The bells, the bells, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's better than it was. It's still it's still kind of giving um, wrinkly raisin vibes, but it's fine. Yeah, I can't even see the nail polish left in this. There's like the tiniest amount. Yeah, I know it is. It is sad. To be fair, it's not my favorite. Um, yeah, definitely. That exactly. She was one of the like. I don't think what year that one came out, but yeah. She is one of the more diverse, um, she's not a princess, but she's, she's a badass. But yeah, no, it is sad. It's sad, um, and also Frollo is like the horniest evil guy. He's like the worst villain. Like, I think I remember watching a review where somebody was like talking about the song Hellfire and basically the reason why Frollo hates 
the traveling community so much and specifically Asmeralda, Asmeralda specifically, because he like awakens something in him and because he's a clergyman, he doesn't like that. And so instead of just, you know, being a better person, he's like, I need to kill her because she makes me feel things and that's not okay. And you're like, you're the problem, not her, my dude. Yeah, Quasimodo always sent up for food. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lunch back to Notre Dame. Ha ha! Ha ha ha! <laughs> yeah, it's funny because I feel like I loved Asmeralda, did not like the Hunchback of Notre Dame film. Like, if I could just have um, a movie about Asmeralda and her, like, little goat sidekick, I think that would be awesome. I would be content with that. Yeah, truly, truly, that's what it was. Yeah, Frollo, yeah. He's not good. The goat was adorable, I loved the goat. And I love how the goat had like a little earring. He just looked like a badass too. He was also, they, they were both, they were a badass duo. Okay, so I'm just gonna dip some um, acetone in this brush and just go in and clean up these edges around my nail just to make sure that we don't have any stickage because I definitely was just like not going for accuracy with that top coat towards the end we were just trying to get smooth and so we might have had some spillage over the edges here the cuticles seem okay though I'm not too worried about that Just going through and cleaning up any schmutz that we got outside of the nail. Some of, like, this stuff will naturally wear off um, once we wash our hands a couple of times, but just to help it along its merry way, we will speed up that process a little bit. So I was thinking about next week. And so I think unfortunately, um, we might only have one stream next week on Thursday. Cause I'm pretty sure, yeah, next Tuesday, Shadow has a grooming appointment. Uh, no, that's not next week. Never mind. Never mind. That's the week after. We're fine. Never mind. Completely disregard what I was saying. We're fine. Tuesday, Thursday, we're good. Friday, there will be no stream. It's the following week that there will be no Tuesday stream. Never mind. I'm see again the fumes, the fumes. It's the fumes' fault. Okay, we're fine. Things are good. Things are good. Um, but yeah. So next week again, it'll also be Tuesday and Thursday for a stream. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I am fuming. Paint fuming, that is. Gotta figure out what we want to do next week. I still have to finish that bird. Still gotta finish the blue bird. And then we still got, I don't know, we got lots. It's one of those where we, again, have tons of options. I still do want to make, again, I will have to put, it might work better for October. 
could be good for the lead up to October. I still think that the little spiders that help the characters in It Takes Two are so adorable that I would love to needle felt a little cute It Takes Two spider. But I'm aware that we'll have to put like arachnophobia trigger warning in the stream title. Though to be fair, we've said for like 90% of the stream it won't look like the thing it's supposed to look like. So hopefully it doesn't give too many heebie-jeebies. Um, but yeah. So I still want to do that. We still have a couple craft kits to do. What else? Got lots. Of just so many crafts, so little time. So little time, so many crafts. I think we're fine. Yeah, see, I feel like it should be okay. I think, like, if we get towards the end, maybe towards the end, like, as long as I put, like, needle felting spider, and it'll say that in the stream title as well, like, or in the, like, current project. So I think it should be okay. We'll see. If I accidentally trigger and offend and scare people, that'll be my apologies. But yeah. Okay, they look not bad. Is it my best work? No. Do I care? Not really, because from a distance, they look like painted nails. They look good. Oops, don't wave them around too much. We might schmuck things. To be fair, like I said, I do think that the right hand is looking a lot nicer than the left hand. Which is unfortunate because the left hand is, you know, where I'll put my wedding band on. And so the wedding band will be beside the raisin nail, but you know, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't wear my wedding ring all the time. I like get it up for special occasions because I'm afraid to lose it and like wash it and do whatever with it. So then every once in a while I bust it out and I go, look Liam, we're married. And he's like, okay, cool. <laughs> Cause like we're legally married all the damn time. But I get to signal to the world that we are with a piece of jewelry. <laughs> Thank you look fabulous. Thank you. I do like the, the, geez, I just slobbered all over the table. That was unfortunate. Um, yeah. So yeah, I like the I like that we did the one accent nail because this color here, the accent nail color, that's the color of the toes. And then these are just like a nice light. Oh yeah, I can show you, I can show you the shiny, I think. So you can, I don't know if you can see, that is the current dull color. And so now look, kind of, it's blurry, but like you can see that they're sparkly, kind of. You can see, yeah, this guy. You can see how it's like holographic rainbows. And then if we turn it off, it's just like darkness. Kind of hard to tell because it's like wanting to autofocus on the grain of the table, which is silly. But yeah. Sparkly. <laughs> All right, we have... Like seven minutes left of stream. What should we do? How's everyone doing? How are we feeling? We're still planning to do part two of Cursed Childhood Media. We're also planning to do um, most epic children's media as well. So if you're in the Discord, um, feel free, but also indicate whether or not this is part of epic childhood or cursed childhood. Um, I'm slowly compiling all of the all of the gifs um, into into stuff, and then we'll do that. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to think what else. That is a plan. Um, I don't know. Yeah, so no stream tomorrow. Tuesday, Wednesday, not Tuesday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Thursday, next week, there will be streams. Um, and then it's gonna be September, guys. That's wild. It's gonna be September. Oh, that's awkward. So next Thursday, I have a chiropractor appointment. 
at 320. Why did I do that? Who thought that that was a good idea? Why would I do that? I want to see if I can change that maybe. I'm going to see if I can change the chiropractor appointment. Um, but if not, we might only have one stream next week on the Tuesday, which would be sad. That would be sad. Um, yeah, I'm going to see if I can change my chiropractor appointment. If not, even if I could like move it up or something, that would be ideal. I'm going to check. I'm going to do that after stream. I'm going to try to change my chiropractor appointment so we can hang out together on Thursday. Um, hopefully. <laughs> September, yeah. I have a work holiday next month. Oh, that's nice. That's always good. Yeah, September. It's good, though, because I'm hoping... I don't know when, I think, uh, pumpkin spice season has started in, in North America now. I'm not sure if pumpkin spice season has started in the UK. Um, but I assume in September that will we will be fully peak season transitioning into pumpkin spice time which is very exciting because that indicates to me that we're getting closer and closer to spooky season if it's not you know if we don't already count that we're in spooky season i kind of feel like we are i like to think so let's see it's not gonna tell me right away is it bitch i just want to know starbucks PSL 2023 UK. Thank you very much. August 24th. Today. Now you guys know. Excellent. It's officially pumpkin spice season, friends. It's officially pumpkin spice season. Apparently Greg's is also doing pumpkin spice. Here we go. The Starbies. Starbucks releases new fall menu with two brand new items. I never had pumpkin spice anything. Oh, interesting. Are you not like a big fan of like cinnamon and like nutmeg and things like that? Um, cause it could be a flavor thing. I think I remember Gremlin was talking about how they're more into the maple side of things. So they would prefer like the maple versions. Like they do a lot of maple in the season. Okay, let me, okay. There's too many ads. Independent, sort your shit out. Close. Wow. Go away. I just want to read what the Starbies menu is. That's all I want. Okay. According to the coffee chain, August 24th, today, there's going to be new exciting Starbies stuff. Yeah, maple over pumpkin. No, just the pumpkin of it scares me. Oh, interesting. So have you never had pumpkin pie? Are you not like a pumpkin pie person? Okay, it is the 20th anniversary of the pumpkin spice latte. Some other beloved drinks in the lineup is the pumpkin cream cold brew and the apple crisp oat milk macchiato. Apple crisp macchiato sounds nice. Ooh, this is going to be good, good. New drinks on the block will include iced pumpkin chai. Why did you jump? Iced pumpkin chai tea latte. Can I have the warm version? A pumpkin cream chai latte is going to be so good. I'm so excited for that. That's gonna be so nice. I'm excited. I'm excited for that one because I love me some chai tea and I love me some pumpkin spice. Combining the two together is gonna be amazing. Meanwhile, the other new addition will be the iced apple crisp oat milk shaken espresso. That's too many, that's too many, that's too much. I'm sure it'll be nice though. Oh, I guess the, it's fall, it's a it's an update because there's a warm predecessor. I've never tried the apple crisp options. I didn't even know that was an option. Offering, oh, parts of reserve location. I don't care about the stuff in the states. That stuff doesn't impact me. I don't want to hear stuff I'm not able to have. Interesting. And then these are all the baked goods that have the gluten, so Tasha cannot have. But I'm excited about the idea of a pumpkin cream spiced latte that's exciting to me you had one bite of pumpkin pie and hated it oh interesting so then that makes sense though that then makes sense to me why you wouldn't be super down for the psl you'll probably you you'll be you'll be riding the maple train with gremlin and honestly that's also an amazing place to be 
All right, who's online? Burr, 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 burr. Does anyone have any raid suggestions? If not, we're gonna go find a new friend. Um, yeah, anyone new for raid suggestions? Or else we are gonna go hang out with one of our friends. Lolelli is doing gouache painting and sewing prep. Interesting. Haha! <laughs> hey but um Thank you. Thank you. Try my best. Try my best to nail it. <laughs> mm. Artemis is playing a game that's in early access. Let's go see Lola Ali. They're they're nice, calm, chill vibes. They're nice, calm, chill vibes. And we enjoy nice, calm, chill vibes over here. Oh my God, and they also are painting like beautifully. And I'm incredibly in awe of them. Amazing, let's go do that. Let's go find out what they're painting cause it looks so freaking pretty. Here is the link to their chat or their channel in case anyone gets left behind in the raid. We're gonna go, here is the raid massage. I hope you guys have a fabulous weekend. I will be jet setting. I will keep you guys updated on what this uh, manual non air conditioned vehicle is gonna be like. Um, but yeah, it should be good. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you guys for hanging out with me while I purdy myself up for the, to be best formal wedding guest in all the land. Um, <laughs> yeah, maybe, perhaps. <laughs> yeah. And like I said, I will see you guys not tomorrow, but next Tuesday. And maybe we're finishing the Bluebird. I'm not sure. We'll see what happens. If not, it's all good. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out with me today, guys. And I will see you later. Bye.